Question. Don't you hate it when someone speaks too close to your face? It's uncomfortable just thinking about it, isn't it? Why? Well, because a personal boundary has been crossed. We depend on boundaries, and we love to name those boundaries. Boundaries help us to organize and make sense of our lives. There are borders around our country, fences or stakes around our home property, bubbles around our personal space, even spaces between my paragraphs. These all exist for reasons of safety or propriety, and so are well advised. But when we put boundaries on people or groups of people just to accentuate the difference, it ceases to serve as well. We become overly concerned with who is in and who is out, which is inevitably followed by who is worthy and who is not. And that touches on what is so radical about the kingdom that Jesus came to establish. His vision that all may be one under God. No boundaries, no distinctions. The letter to the Galatian community reads, There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. So, when John incredulously tells Jesus that someone is carrying out God's work in his name, but was not following them, Jesus had to set him straight about the real purpose of discipleship, to invite all people into an encounter with Christ. So, it's interesting how people and groups can be so close in some respects, but miles apart in others. You know, where I live, there are three churches on the same street, all in a span of one kilometer. On one end is the Bedford United Church. I'm reminded of this church's presence every hour when I'm at home as its beautiful bells peal out for all to hear. They remind me of the consistent and dependable presence of God. On Sundays, I overhear classic hymns from those same bells. It brings to mind the verse of a psalm. O oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. I often think during those times, those people must really know how to worship Jesus. In the middle of this stretch of road is my own parish, St. Ignatius Catholic Church. I was thinking recently about all the outreach that this little parish does the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, the Seniors Outreach, the Knights of Columbus, the CWL, Ivina Prayer, and so on. This humble service to their neighbors reminds me of the parable of the Good Samaritan and what it teaches about love of neighbor. I often think, my church must really know how to serve Jesus because they serve others. On the other end of this stretch of road lies All Saints Anglican Church, I walk by this church every day on my way to and from work, so I'm greeted daily by this odd-looking structure at the end of its driveway that looks similar to a mailbox. It's right by the sidewalk to all, for all to see. It's a prayer request box, not for their congregation, but for anyone passing by who has something or someone on their heart and needs prayer. It reminds me of the Philippians verse that says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Sometimes when I pass that prayer box, I can't help but think, those people must really know how to speak and listen to Jesus. All three churches I just mentioned are proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ beyond church walls. A little ways past that church is Chalice, where I work. Chalice is a Catholic organization that serves the poor. Every morning, the staff starts their workday with morning prayer. When the bell rings to usher in those gathered with vocal and instrumental harmony, I think of Bedford United Church with its consistent call to worship. When we huddle together at each of our tables to pray for the needs of others, I think of All Saints Anglican, 
wearing its heart on its sleeve for the needs of its community. As our morning service is ended, our praise and prayer are in fact just beginning as we return to our desks, for they cannot help but spill over into our service for the poor that St. Ignatius Church exemplifies so well. Chalice is Catholic, and the word Catholic means universal. Therefore, its mission to the poor knows no boundaries. Now, clearly there are differences between denominations and faith expressions, but it need not create most of the boundaries we've created. As our missioning prayer states, grant that we may realize that it's the little things in life which create differences, that in the big things of life, we are one. As Jesus states in our gospel, whoever is not against us is for us. With its varied faith backgrounds and diverse gifts, I see chalice as the closest thing I know to the church being truly one, as it was meant to be, with no walls to separate us. I see chalice as the summation of what these three different faith communities have been communicating to me lately, and I feel blessed to literally be able to walk through this lesson almost every day. Our faith is a gift, not an achievement, as John was prone to believe in the gospel passage. This was the same John who foolishly asked that he be seated at the right hand of God in heaven. It's not an achievement because nothing we do for others is done under our name, but under his name, whether we know it or not. So forget about who is in and who is out, as John failed to do, as did Joshua in our first reading, and as do we. All that matters is who is all in for the name of Jesus. So what about you? Are there walls in your life? What's hiding behind them? And what opportunities are you missing outside those walls?